Welcome to another episode of Ask the Zamboni Experts. I'm your host, Doug Peters. Today's guest is Matt Quapis of Mobility Sports, LLC. Today, we're going to be talking about the sleds that Matt's company develops to enable hockey players to play hockey on sleds if they've got injuries. Matt, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Doug. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to have you here. Could you tell us and our listeners a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, your family, and where you live? Um, yeah, so I actually grew up in um, northern Michigan, just a small town, uh, about an hour south of the Mackinac Bridge, um, and grew up up there. Um, I've, um, I'm have i a wheelchair user. I've been in a wheelchair the majority of my life. I was born with spina bifida, um, and... I found um, sled hockey um, when I was about 14, I believe. Um, there was a clinic um, down in about uh, down in Grand Rapids, which was about three hours from where we lived in Northern Michigan, um, and um, got on the got on the ice. At that time, my, my dad had um, who had previously worked in the in the software. Um, industry um, selling software for the last 20 years or so um, was recently laid off you know when that whole the dot-com bubble kind of you know all that happened and so um, he was laid off I got on the ice he was thinking about um, uh, making wheelchairs um, you know just with wheelchairs being so incredibly expensive um, he actually, uh, my dad actually had a, at one time, it just recently expired, um, had a patent on a wheelchair. Um, and so he built me several of those, um, you know, bought his own welder, taught himself how to weld. Um, and then when I found sled hockey, he was like, oh, I could build one of those. And so he, you know, um, took one uh, that I was using there. Um, brought it in his, you know, uh, quote unquote workshop, which was our uh, two car garage uh, where we were living at the time. Uh, we had moved to uh, down by Detroit, Michigan. Um, and he built um, a sled and, um, you know, uh, I took it to my that next practice that weekend. And everybody's like, oh, where'd that sled come from? And my dad said, oh, I built that. And, you know, the rest is kind of just history. Um, you know, since then, um, we've moved, uh, we moved again uh, my uh, junior year of high school um, and uh, now live, I now live in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, um, where I kind of handle, um, you know, I've graduated from high school, graduated from high school about 10 years ago, got my uh, associate's degree in business administration um and started working with my dad you know i was really passionate about it it's, you know it's great to work with my dad and um you know kind of educate people about, about sled hockey and uh so i mean you know since then we my dad my parents have actually about three years ago they moved back up to northern michigan where i grew up um and my dad went from working in a you know, essentially a two-car garage to a, I believe it's like a 40 by 60 um, uh, foot uh, pole barn. So he has all of his equipment in there. And uh, yeah, so things have really, you know, kind of taken off in the last couple of years. Uh, and that, I think that's... that's uh, that, that's awesome. So you're down in Fort Wayne. Do you ever venture over to the Allen County War Memorial in Fort Wayne? Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, I go um, about once a year to go and watch, um, uh, you know, the Comet Games. Um, that's our local, I believe it's, um, it used to be IHL, but I'm not sure what, I think it's ECHL now. Um, and our, um, we have a local sled hockey program here um, in Fort Wayne um, that my dad and I actually helped start when we moved here about 15 years ago, um, and we used to, um, back, this has been several years ago, um, skate um, in between periods at the Comet Games once a year. 
Um, haven't done that in several several years, but that was really neat to be able to do that. Well, we'll have to put a call into Randy Brown over there, who's been a bit, very big fan of Zamboni and the Zamboni Company for many years. Uh, I would see him annually, and he's one of the finest gentlemen I've had the pleasure to meet. And if I can be of any help to you and uh, hooking something up uh, in between periods at a game uh, for a presentation of the sled hockey so people can see your talents as well as the talents of others, just let me know and I'd be happy to do so. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. I will keep that in mind. Great. Can you tell us, you, you got your start um, uh, at a opportunity to try sled hockey. Um, is that how your love for hockey got its start? Or were you a hockey fan before that? And then that drove you to go down and, and give sled hockey a try? Oh, I've been a um, a hockey fan, really. You know, growing up in Michigan, it was kind of... Uh, you know, everyone's a hockey fan up there. I was a, you know, been a lifelong fan of the Detroit Red Wings. Um, and uh, several of my friends um, played stand-up um, hockey. So I've always, I'd always been a hockey fan, you know, I'd go to the high school games um, up there. And um, so when I was able, when I found, saw, uh, you know, that uh, hockey that I could actually physically play, I was just blown away and so excited. Well, your story touched my heart, uh, Matt, when I saw it on, uh, I believe it was Hockey Day in the USA. It inspired me to reach out to you. Uh, a very dear friend of mine, and the, as well as the company, uh, it was Travis Roy. I don't know if you're familiar with the Travis Roy story or not, but Travis uh, was a hockey player who became a quadriplegic his first shift playing at BU and uh, for 25 years while he was in his wheelchair uh, he had a foundation and did quite a bit for those uh, less fortunate than he was uh, and his foundation gave out um, millions of dollars in uh, grants for both research and to make people people's lives easier that uh, reside in a wheelchair. But that was part of the reason I wanted to reach out and talk to you because uh, while the stories are not identical, there are some similarities. And I, I really was touched uh, by the story that uh, Discover and the NHL did on you and your father. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm, um, uh, you know, familiar with, with Travis Roy and all the work that he did, and, you know, was, um, you know, really just, great and all around great man um and um yeah i mean as far as the story that um you know discover in the nhl did um you know on uh you know my dad and i um i personally think that um you know that it was great um i was honored to be a part of it but for me it's about you know what we um you know all the possibilities that we you know were able to create um, for, you know, people that, you know, uh, they get injured in a car accident or, you know, they're injured overseas, you know, fighting for our country and they come back here and they, they're just, they, they, they don't feel like they don't have a place anymore. And then they find sled hockey and it's just like, everything just opens up for them. And it's just great. It's just great to see that it, it's really changed. People, it really changes people's lives. Are you still playing sled hockey? Uh, and if so, whereabouts are you doing that? Um, so I did take a, a few years off um, back in um, uh, 2018. Um, I got married. And um, so I took a few years off to just kind of, you know, focus on helping um, with, with our business. And, you know, I was really just, um, I didn't want to be, you know, I'm in a wheelchair and, you know, I use my arms all the time. I didn't want to be one of these, um, you know, 40 year old guys that have to have rotator cuff surgery. Um, and so, you know, being 30, I was like, oh, I want, you know, at that time I wasn't quite 30, but almost. And, uh, I, you know, I, so I took a couple years off, but in that time I realized, you know, how much I really missed it. Um, and so, um, actually back last year 
I decided that I really wanted to go back. Um, but then everything kind of shut down. Um, so I, re but I've really missed it. And, you know, I play here, um, on the local team, uh, here in Fort Wayne, which I you know, previously mentioned that my dad and I, uh, helped start. Um, and we travel really all over the, you know, we have tournaments, um, you know, when I played regularly before a few years ago, we would travel, you know, um, to Grand Rapids, um, up by Detroit, um, to Ohio a few different times. Um, you know, been to Pittsburgh. I think the, the, the furthest we've traveled has been to, um, uh, San Jose. We were there for a tournament, um, the, the national tournament. Um, it was, I think about five years ago. Um, so that, that was a lot of fun, but yeah, we've been all over, you know, playing. Um, and then it seemed like, you know, when I wasn't playing, I was, um, you know, even in between games, I would, you know, change out of all my gear and I would help my dad. We would have a booth set up and, you know, just educate people about, you know, our products and, you know, help them if they had um, uh, equipment issues with their sleds, um, you know, maybe on, you know, on occasion they'd be looking at, um, you know, buying a new sled and we'd get them, you know, set up with all that, uh, and just different things like that. So, um, but I'm I'm really excited about, you know, hopefully come this fall um, to kind of, you know, jump back in my sled and get back at it um, full force. It's funny you talk about a 40-year-old guy having to have shoulder surgery. Well, I'm one of those, but I'm much, uh, much older than the 40 years old. Um, bowling took its toll on my shoulder, as did uh, years of schlepping suitcases around on the road. And Oh, I don't even know how many years ago it is now that uh, that I had to have my one shoulder fixed, and at some point in time, I'm sure I'll have to have my other one fixed as well. So uh, it, there there is light at the end of the tunnel if you do have to have that done. Uh, the advancements yeah. that they've made made in it uh, are are wonderful. So Matt, do you see rinks making modifications uh, to make it easier access for sled hockey? I've seen some. Uh, where they've either got a shorter dasher board or they've actually got a clear dasher uh, facing so that uh, the players, when they're on the bench, can see out onto the ice and see what's going on in the game. Correct. And, you know, I have seen, uh, you know, that happening. Of course, you know, it could always be better. And I think as, you know, the, the game of sled hockey grows, which it seems like it just grows more and more each year. You'll see more and more rinks, hopefully having more adaptions. And yeah, so what, you know, what I've seen that they do, because um, typically in, in a sled hockey game, you know, the players that, you know, there's it's uh, same rules as stand up hockey. So there's five skaters and a goalie and the, the players that, you know, aren't out um, on the ice are just lined up in their sleds on the other side of the boards. Um, so it can, you know, as you can imagine, um, kind of uh, um, impede play, you know, if a puck gets, you know, bumped up, you know, up against the players, then there's kind of a, you know, kind of a scramble to get it out. Um, so the, the rinks that have, um, you know, been able to kind of create that, the, you know, put the plexiglass up along, along the boards, and then they put the synthetic ice down so you can, um, the players that are not, you know, in play can kind of skate off. Um, that's really great. Um, and I do see, you know, as time goes on, hopefully more rinks, um, you know, start doing that because, you know, I just think it would be great, you know, not only for sled hockey players, but just, you know, in general, I just think it's just great. We've heard that you're a Red Wing fan. And I've got great respect for that organization. They've been a great customer of ours. Um, but being an Anaheim Duck fan, we kind of got tired of them uh, beating up on the lowly little Ducks um, over the years. We, we did the one year that the Ducks won the Stanley Cup. Uh, we were able to finally, finally vanquish the, the mighty Red Wings. Do you have a, a favorite college team that you follow um, now or when you're growing up? To be honest, no. Um, I was never, never just college sports in general, never really big on it. You know, growing up in Michigan, you know, of course, 
if there was a Michigan game, you know, a hockey game on, um, either University of Michigan or even Michigan State, I actually did go one year to, um, I believe it was the Michigan-Michigan State hockey game. You know, this is probably 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, but that was really neat, um, and I believe that was at um, uh, Michigan State in uh, in East Lansing um, at their arena. Um, so, you know, I would say, you know, I have always been, you know, a fan of the Michigan teams, uh, now living in Indiana. Um, you know, Notre Dame is always great. Um, you know, been to, uh, I think, one of uh, a Notre Dame game, a uh, hockey game as well. Uh, but, you know, I was joke as far as, college uh teams go i'm a fan um of whoever i'm i'm with if if that person is a, a you know a diehard fan of a certain team sure i am too that's funny because my favorite teams who's ever beating the lakers um and okay. growing up <laughs> growing up in minnesota and most people don't understand that it's um not because of the abundance of lakes in southern california uh, that the Lakers got their name. So I, I understand, and it's nice that you've got the ability to uh, to change your allegiances to suit the crowd that you're with. One of the uh, more famous Red Wings, uh, Sergei Fedorov, who I'm sure that uh, you got to see play, um, his brother owns and operates a rink in Petoskey. Have you gone over and visited that rink uh, or had any games up that way when, when you were living in upstate Michigan? I have not, and, you know, I – to be completely honest, I was not not aware of that. Um, my parents live probably about an hour away from Petoskey, and I, I get up to visit them um, once every couple months. So next time I'm up there, I will have to go and, um, you know, check it out. Because, uh, you know, uh, Fedorov definitely was, you know, one of, one of my uh, favorite players, you know, along with you know, Yeiserman and Datsu you know, all those guys from, you know, back in the day, they were all my favorites. So I'll have to go check out that rink. Yeah, if you do stop in and say hi to Feder, he's a great guy. I've been chatting with him. He bought a machine from us uh, a few years back, and he's just uh, a wonderful guy. And tell him that uh, you could give him some tips on how to not dump and chase the puck uh, while you're on your sled, how you'll be able to skate it in around him. So really good guy. I'll definitely keep that in mind. Great. Matt, can you tell us how sleds have evolved over the years uh, to improve the game for their users? Oh, yeah. I mean, I you know, can't speak, you know, a lot on this, to be honest. I'm not, uh, you know, for, for a few reasons. One, I'm not a super, uh, you know, mechanical guy. My, my dad handles all that with our business. Um, but, you know, just from what I've seen, um, you know, from the little bit, you know, uh, you know, I say short time that we've been in, uh, involved in sled hockey because, you know, sled hockey really was in existence for, um, you know, several years before we really got involved. But you see some of the, the earlier sleds and they were, um, you know, quite literally just, um, you know, to, to um, you know, um, I think at that time they may have even used steel to, you know, to produce the sleds and they were, uh, the players were literally, you know, sitting on, um, you know, so there would be two, two rails um, with two skate blades underneath of them. And then where their, uh, their heels go, um, you know, now we have um, padding that your heels sit up on, so they're not dragging on the ice, but before that, you know, I've seen that they just use tape, um, and then to sit in, they would just, um, you know, quite literally, I've seen seen some, it was just, you know, um, wood with, um, you know, a little bit of padding around it. Um, and, you know, now it's, you know, the slides have just come so far. They're, you know, really tailored toward um, each individual person. I mean, we can get them to, you know, where it's, you get in, in the sled and it's like you're, you know, for lack of a better, um, you know, phrase that you're sitting, um, you know, in an ice skate. I mean, it fits to you like a glove. Um, so it's, it's really come, you know, leaps and bounds to where it was, you know, 
um, when it started, you know, 20, you know, 20, 30 years ago. So they've become much more customized to the, the shape of the person. Uh, is that an yes. accurate statement? Yes, sir. Absolutely. You know, we have different um, bucket sizes, um, you know, to accommodate for, you know, different, you know, size hips and, you know, all of that. And then, um, and then different lengths. So you can, um, and, you know, all of our sleds are adjustable. Um, and so, you know, they, they do fit, you know, different size people. Um, and, you know, whereas before it was just kind of, you know, from my understanding, it kind of, you know, the sled is, you know, it was built for you and that was it. And, um, you know, it, it, it there was no adjustability. So I know that kind of goes back on what I, I said before about it being, you know, more cust or more custom. Um, but they're just, it's definitely, um, you know, I, I see now they're definitely more, more custom and, you know, as well as, uh, you know, more adjustable, if, if that makes sense. It it does completely. And uh, since we build ice resurfacers and we get customers that want them different colors uh, up in the Detroit area, they may want a red and white one um, or in uh, at the big house, they might want a maize and blue and um, not maybe necessarily looking for the maroon and gold of Minnesota Gophers. Do you guys offer different colors or any ways for them uh, to customize the look of the the sled we do not that's something that you know we just don't offer um you know primarily um just on cost on our end um and um you know we do have some um uh pieces or components on our sleds um the uh, primarily the the blade spacers so um we can you can customize your your blade width um you know that that that's underneath the sled um from anywhere from like a half an inch up to six inches six or even i think like seven inches and you know the wider that the blades are um you know the the more um stable the sled is but it's harder to turn um and and maneuver the sled so that you know the theory is you know, the better you get, the more practice you have, the more you can bring those blades in. Uh, but where I was going with that was um, the, those the spacers, and they're, and they're just spacers, you know, that you put in, in the blades. Um, we have those different colors. Um, and, you know, that's really just to tell them apart. So when we ship out a slide, we can say, you know, indicate, you know, use the, the black spacers. And then, you know, also use the red spacers and, and just kind of um, for, for that, so. It, it's interesting. I had the opportunity years ago to um, partake in, uh, in a sled. And it was at a conference out on the Cape uh, of Massachusetts, Cape Cod. And uh, it amazes me when I watch uh, the Olympic level or not necessarily even Olympic level, just the people who are um, regulars at sled hockey, what they're able to do. It, it's mind boggling to me because as a former hockey player, an upright hockey player, um, and my game now is not uh, not all that great, not that it ever was, but it, it amazes me what people can do with those sleds and beyond, you know, they're, they've got a disability. Um, they are able to do incredible things. And I thank you and your father for uh, creating components that enable them to have that experience uh, on ice like an upright skater might have. Of course. Um you know, we're, we're, you know, honored really to be, um, you know, I think I can speak for both my dad and I were, we're honored to, you know, just be a part of it and just to see, you know, it, it, you know, I hate to say it again, but, you know, just how it changes people's lives. And, um, uh, you know, I've just, you know, just to speak on the, um, the, uh, the speed of the game. I mean, you watch the elite level, like the, the Paralympic skaters and it's, nearly or you know even 
at the same speed of the, um, you know, the NHL players. I mean, it's just so fast and what those players are able to do uh, with, with their sleds. Um, it's just, it is, you know, like you said, incredible. Since we produce ice resurfacers, what critiques or suggestions would you have for uh, hopefully Zamboni ice resurfacer drivers to provide conditions that would help players in sled hockey? I would definitely say, you know, it's definitely tough, you know, when sometimes you get on the ice and it's um, quite literally like a lake and, you know, it's, uh, you know, over time, you know, as the game goes on, it um that does get better but it's uh that part is tough when it is really wet especially you know if you fall over and then it's like then you're wet and you know so you're wet with sweat and you know from the ice um and then also you know there's uh you know occasionally you'll see like the, the snow build up like the piles you know, primarily in the corners um, which isn't as big a deal. I would just say the big thing, at least from my perspective, would be the, you know, the, you know, sometimes it can just be a little too, a little too, too wet. Yeah, that's one of the things that uh, people not only on sleds, but people who are upright skating uh, have to contend with the inexperienced operators. And we, we've got some components of our machine, some options that are available uh, to help reduce that from happening. So hopefully the the rinks that uh, you partake in will either have more experienced operators or get some of these features that are available uh, so that uh, those types of uh, issues where you're swimming in a ice rink don't happen. Right, right, yeah, because that's definitely no fun. No, no, I can remember that back from the days when I was young and uh, playing hockey and falling down in the first period and being wet and cold the rest of the game. So not not a fun thing. Matt, how did the story that the NHL did on you and your dad impact your business? So, quite honestly, I mean, we did get a little, a little, you know, when the the commercial um, aired, um, we did get, you know, a little, um, you know, hey, I saw you on TV, and you know, it's pretty neat to say that I've been, you know, on national TV for, you know, a short um, amount of time. Um, but it's just sort of, you know, a bummer. I know it's, um, you know, it affected everything, but just with the way the, the timing of everything, you know, it was like the, the commercial kind of aired. And then right around that time is really when everything started shutting down. Um, so there was really no sled hockey, you know, to be, you know, every, everything was just closed. Um, but I think that, you know, the, now that people, you know, are getting back to things and they've seen that, um, you know, that commercial, um, I think, you know, we do get more people that ask us about it. Um, and I think, you know, every year, you know, hoping that it's, you know, when they have Hockey Day um, across America, that commercial will air um, and, you know, more people will ask us about it. You may have touched a little bit this uh, in um, our discussion earlier, but based on the story that, that NHL Discover did, you seem very driven to help give to the sport of hockey to make it more accessible to all. Does this come from growing up and spending a large portion of your life in a wheelchair or what is it that uh, is driven you and your father to um, to be what you're doing? That's a really good question. Um, you know, I, I think, yeah, I think some of it does stem from, you know, my, you know, growing up and, you know, like I said, I, I, I walked with crutches until I was about seven. And then from about seven until, you know, now I've been, you know, fully dependent on my wheelchair. Um, and I would say it's, you know, definitely uh, driven by, you know, my growing up and, um, you know, just seeing, um, you know, just really just, uh, I, I keep bringing it up just, but just really seeing how much it, it positively Im impacts people's lives. And, you know, we never, you know, want to stop that. We always want to, you know, keep growing 
And, um, you know, me personally, I just think it's just great to see, you know, how it, it changes people's lives. Well, it certainly sounds like it's had an impact. The ability to play hockey has had an impact positively on your life. And I think that what I'm getting in hearing you is that you enjoy as much to see others be able to play the sport that you have a passion for. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and quite honestly, probably even even more um, just because, you know, it, it definitely is, is rough on, uh, on the body, like I, I, I touched on before. Um, so, so it's, it's great to see other people, um, you know, in, enjoy something that I've enjoyed for, you know, nearly 20 years. Um, and, you know, I've met some of my, my, my best friends through sled hockey. Um, and it, it is a smaller community than um you know it's growing every year but it's smaller than you know the the stand-up hockey community um and so it's it's great because it's like we're all a big big family like everybody knows each other um, for the most part yeah it's i think it's one of those tough things and i had a lot of heart-to-heart conversations with travis and his father uh over the years um nobody wants to see anybody um, have to uh, be in a wheelchair. Uh, it uh, Travis changed a lot of lives, and as you and your father are, um, but I think there's, you know, you would probably not uh, want to see people have to have it. But it's great, uh, I think, what you guys are doing to enable those that are put in the situation of um, not being able to play upright hockey that they still can um, continue or learn the sport. Um, and develop the love for it like you did. And I applaud you and your father for that. I appreciate that. And yeah, I mean, uh, you know, definitely nobody, you know, wants to, you know, I, ca- I can't even imagine, you know, I would say I can't even imagine, you know, waking up one day and, you know, not being able to, you know, have the use of my legs. Um, just because being in a wheelchair is all I've ever known. Um, and so it really, it does not have an impact on me. Um, but to, you know, have that news, um, you know, but then to come across the game of, you know, it's not even, not even just, I know we're talking about hockey here, but just sports in general, you know, adaptive sports. I just think it's, it's great. And it's, um, can just, um, just the impacts, you know, um, the psychological impacts, um, can really just be a life, life-changing thing. Well, it's one of the things that we've talked with. We did a podcast with a couple people from the NHL, and the word inclusive or inclusivity uh, is very strong with them. They, they want to make it the sport of hockey and the passion for the NHL game to be all-inclusive. And I, I hear that in what you say as well, that uh, it, it's very important to you to help people be able to be included in, in what I think, and I'm biased for more than one reason, but I think that hockey is the greatest sport that uh, that is out there. Oh, I completely agree. Absolutely. Matt, can you tell our listeners about any workings that uh, you have with USA Hockey? Is it something that you've been doing for a while? Is it something you're hoping to get into if you're not already involved with them? Oh, we have a we have a wonderful um, relationship with USA Hockey. Um, we have for several years, um, probably I want to say like the last, um, oh, it's probably been ten years, maybe. We have um, what's called the USA Disabled Hockey Sled Lending Program. And, um, you know, uh, goes without saying, but the last couple, um, you know, year or so, that program's kind of been on hold. Um, but so what the, the USA Disabled Hockey Sled Lending Program um, allows is, um, so number one, it's, it's, it's ran by us. So we have built, um, I think we have, um, 48 sleds 
um, and their very various um, lengths and bucket widths um, and sticks. And we also have um, high backs. So they, they mount on the, the back of the bucket um, as well. At, and that is, allows for, you know, somebody with a, a higher injury who doesn't have the balance, um, some added support. And then we have, um, you know, uh, they're called pusher handles. And they just slide in the back of the of the sled, and that allows for you know somebody who does not have the strength um, to push themselves um, allows somebody um, on uh, stand up skates to push them around, so they're able to have that experience um, of being on the ice. Um, so we we have and those all those items um, are um, kind of in the um, uh, you know, in use by uh, the USA Disabled Hockey Sled Lending Program, um, like I said, which allows um, current groups or um, groups looking to start a sled hockey program and just trying to see, you know, how much interest there is. Um, and so they um, fill out a form, um, you know, basically requesting the sleds, and we let them know if the date is available. Um, and we box up the sleds um, and, you know, any, all the other equipment, um, you know, that I previously mentioned. And um, they go out to, to the event, um, you know, and the events can be, you know, you know, as few as just a couple people or they can be, you know, huge events where I've seen, you know, they have, you know, 40 people out on the ice and they have news crews there. And, you know, it's just, it's just great. Um, and so all of that is is uh, paid for um, by USA Hockey. Um, and so the groups are not responsible for, you know, any type of um, uh, funding on, on their part um, with that. Um, and now, you know, with the ongoing or the current situation of, you know, kind of where we are today, um, that kind of has changed. Um, but we, you know, we, we plan on, you know, um, it, here in the very near future, things starting back up again. Well, it's great that you do that. And I'm going to be, again, somewhat selfish here in that uh, anything that is done to bring more people into ice rinks is something that we certainly are in support of, because if there's uh, more user groups using ice rinks, there's going to be more need for our product. So uh, again, thank you for what you're doing to bring another segment of the population uh, to the ice rink world and the ice rink industry. Well, of course, absolutely. Like I said, I, uh, I love it. So it's just, it's great. We have a customer who owns a rink in Albuquerque, and it, I found um, him through Facebook, uh, and it turned out that he and I went to a hockey camp together many moons ago. Um, his son plays sled hockey, uh, but he's on a different brand that I'm not going to talk about um, because I don't want to do that. Uh, but could you tell our listeners what uh, it is about your um, sleds that sets them apart from competitive units? Other sleds that we've seen on the market are more tailored towards one specific person and they're more custom, whereas ours we try to, you know, reach as many people as possible. So I could get in a sled and then, you know, um, one of you could get in, you know, um, you know, anybody could jump in the sled after me, um, you know, with just making a few adjustments. It sounds like what yours are are maybe a, a more universal sled that um, multiple bodies could use on, let, let's say it's off for a weekend and you had different groups coming in, you could customize it to fit different people where the other one, and maybe I'll go to like um, a molded boot might be for uh, a specific body. Um, where yours maybe can adapt. I, I hope that I'm um, formatting that in the proper verbiage uh, to describe things. Absolutely, a absolutely. That that I 
couldn't have said that better myself. That That's perfect. What goals do you have um, for the company, uh, Matt, between you and your dad? Is it something that uh, you envision that this is what uh, your career is going to be? Uh, yes. Um, you know, uh, we'll see kind of, you know, what the, what the future holds. Um, I mean, but for right now, things are, you know, working and like I said, you know, we're growing every year. Um, I feel like, and we're, you know, reaching more people. Um, and, you know, uh, I mean, my goal would definitely be to, you know, to see, you know, more and go, go to, uh, a different event and, you know, Every, every sled or every other, you know, sled that you see on the ice be a sled for mobility sports. I mean, that would just be be great. But, um, I mean, you know, be, taking that out of the equation, just having people in sleds, regardless of, you know, where they came from, is the most important thing. You know, I, and I, I think I can speak for my dad on that note as well, that, um, you know that's the most important thing um just seeing the the game itself just grow um is is just so important and just continuing to uh you know uh not to sound like a broken record but just continuing to uh change people's lives have you um had the opportunity to compete against any NHL players that uh um decided to um, get into a sled and and try sled hockey versus stand up hockey. I have not. Um, we um, uh, not any any NHL players. I know that there have been other you know individuals that have um, had that opportunity. Personally, I have not. Um, back and this is again several years ago. Um, we did have a. a um, it would be just it was just like one practice where the uh the Fort Wayne Comets would come to our local sled hockey practice and a few of um you know those guys would get in sled. So they're not quite NHL, you know, players, um, but they're, you know, up there. And, you know, they I remember when they would get in sleds and, you know, they were just um it was kind of, you know, comical to see how they were, you know, just completely out of their element and then they you know got up off the ice and they were just like that was really tough and they didn't realize how much strength it actually took and then you know you would talk to them you know a day or so later and they were like oh I'm so sore and my body hurts so much and it just took more out of them than you know um the game uh, you know Santa hockey that they're used to playing all the time. I'm sure that it gave them a good appreciation. And like I say, when I tried it, it was, it was something I've tried curling and I uh, realized in curling uh, that I had a bunch of muscles that hadn't been used in quite a while and they were sore for quite an extended period of time. Have you guys adapted the sleds so that if somebody wanted to play roller hockey, and I asked that because of, out here in California, you can't uh, generally go out and find outdoor ice unless you're up in the mountains. Um, but is that something that is doable um, or something you guys have thought about? That's a great question, Doug. Yeah, definitely. That, um, that's something we've definitely, um, we have thought about and we, we do offer. We have um, what's called a, a wheel kit um, and um, it just simply goes in place of the blades. Um, and it allows for, you know, if ice is not available um, to, um, it's not, ice is not available. Um, you can, we don't really, you know, for several, you know, obvious reasons, the most being, you know, liability, we don't recommend it playing, you know, in the street or anything like that. Um, it's also, you know, uh, really rough on the equipment if it's not a, a flat surface. Um, particularly the gloves, you know, because if you think you're um, pushing, um, you know, the sticks and each time, you know, you, you um, push, your knuckles are hitting the ground. And if it's an uneven surface, you're going to eat through a pair of gloves, you know, in, in no time. Um, and so, yeah, we have the wheels 
and then um, what goes in place of the picks um, that we found um, works best is um, they're just rubber um, like forearm crutch tips um, and so you take the picks off and you put those um, cr rubber crutch tips on and you know you can um, uh, you know maneuver yourself um, and what's also great um, you know along with the wheel kit we also have um, you know we call it the, our universal wheel kit and that allows for um, you know somebody that may not have a mobility sport sled to also have that opportunity to if they don't have the opportunity to get on the ice um, they can you know go to a, a tennis court or you know if uh, you know as last resort you know in their driveway um, and things like that so yeah that's definitely something that we have um, thought about and we've uh, you know kind of put into uh, put into uh, practice it's something out here there's a lot of roller rinks uh, or out you know outdoor um, for roller hockey so they've got maybe a sport court surface uh, and I it's funny I was just at a facility watching a stepdaughter uh, in a tournament uh, for jujitsu and it was at a old what used to be an ice rink that I sold the machine to years ago in Vegas and they still have the sport court down and they still have the uh, dasher boards up and um, I'm thinking that uh, it might just be an opportunity or um, roller rinks uh, for another opportunity for them to generate revenue if there was uh, this adaptability and uh, get people to maybe get started and then uh, transition from roller into ice like they do in stand-up hockey. Right, yeah, and, you know, I see, you know, as the, the sport continues to grow, I definitely see that coming to uh, fruition, you know, um, roller rinks offering, you know, maybe having a, a league of some sort. Um, you know, just like there are, you know, sled hockey leagues all over. Maybe they'll have, you know, roller sled hockey leagues, um, you know, in, in the future as things, the sport continues to grow. Well, we've got to the point where I consider myself to be somewhat of a foodie. And this is a question that I ask of most all of our guests. Um, are you familiar with White Castle? I am. And are you a yay or a nay to the White Castle burgers? I, I am a yay. Um, however, you know, unfortunately, where I'm located, we don't, we do not have. I think the closest one is um, about two hours away. Um, okay. But I, I do, I do enjoy White Castle. I'm glad to hear that. There's some other people within our organization that uh, aren't as fond of them as I am, but they were a big part of. Uh, hangover prevention when I was younger and living in Minnesota. Yeah, absolutely. I completely understand. What would be your favorite food, Matt? You know, I'm I I consider myself a, a foodie as well. I you know all types of food. I'll try anything once. You know, as I always say, um, I really like you know can't go wrong with um, you know a, a good uh, barbecue. Uh, grilled steak. Um, I, I enjoy cooking um, as well um, and, and grilling. Um, so I would definitely say like, you know, can't beat, uh, you know, a good uh, grilled steak. Well, and I know down in Indiana, there's a lot of places that you can get that, uh, uh, especially like Indianapolis. I think that I've been, is it St. Elmo's Fire? Is that the... Uh, it, it is. Okay, that, that, their their uh, shrimp cocktail is uh, well worth the journey um, if you haven't had it. Have not, um, you know. I keep telling my uh, my wife we might. Uh, uh, Indianapolis is about is about two hours from, from where we're at, we are here in uh, Fort Wayne, so I keep telling her that we might have to make a trip down there just so we can go and you know try it out. Well, and if you do, there's a gentleman who is a former professional bowler who one of these days I'm going to reach out to him and get him uh, on a podcast as well that owns an ice rink. Uh, one of the finest men I've ever met, Mike Alby, and uh, he's also got a couple ice rinks that uh, that he owns in addition to the bowling alley. So if you get down that way, let me know and I can uh, hook you up with him to 
to visit and maybe you can talk to him about uh, expanding his customer base to include sled hockey players. Oh, absolutely. That would be great. Great. Where is the best meal that you've ever had, if you can recall that? That's a tough one. You know, I would probably say, um, you know, my uh, my my mom's family is all from um, out uh, east um, in uh, Massachusetts, and um, I cannot remember the name of the restaurant, but they had a uh, uh, lobster. You know, it's you know fresh off the boat, yep. and uh, uh, you know lobster rolls. Um, I mean, that was just that would probably be, you know, in the, in the top for me. Um, well, if you get out to the Boston area and I don't know if she's from Boston or thereabouts, but, um, the, I think the best pizza place in the land is Santapio's and it is, uh, the last local exit on the way into Logan airport and they have barbecue. You can get, uh, lamb you can get sausage you can get steak tips but uh i highly recommend a double garlic pizza um you might la not like the results the next day but uh it is a spectacular pizza if you get the opportunity to go there have have to definitely try that i have uh quite a bit of uh, you know, my uh uh the majority of my family's in uh western uh, massachusetts but do have some family in uh in the Boston area. In fact, I was actually, I was born in Boston. Uh, my parents, you know, only lived out in that, uh, you know, area for a few years. So that's why I said, you know, I grew up for the most part in Northern Michigan, but was actually born in Boston. So. Where is, you've traveled a little bit. So where would your favorite place um, that you've been to, or what is your favorite place that you have yet to been uh, travel to? You know, I, I always say that I think my, my favorite city, even though driving is a little crazy there, um, is um, is Boston. Um, I just think that the history um, is, is great. Um, and, and going to, you know, some of the, the great places, you know, there. Um, I go, you know, every couple of years, you know, when we go out to see my you know my mom's family we we travel it's about three hours to boston um it seems like we go there every you know, few years um haven't been in in probably five or five years or so but um boston's great um places you know i've always wanted to go i've honestly i've never been um anywhere west, you know out west i've always wanted to go to you know like colorado um, you know, places like that, um, and just have, have not had the opportunity. So that would be great if I was, you know, ever to have the opportunity to travel out West, I would definitely, you know, jump on that in a heartbeat. Well, if you decide to make a road trip and you're looking to go through States to visit ice rinks, I can, uh, create like a little trip tick, like AAA does for you so that you can pop in and visit a whole bunch of ice rinks and, uh, introduce your product to a whole new client base. Okay, that would be great. I, I will definitely keep that in mind. Thank you. Matt, how does someone learn more about you and Mobility Sports Story? It, you know, just, um, you know, we do have um, a, a Facebook page, you know, just Mobility Sports, um, and then our um, our, our website, um, www.mobilitysports.com. Um, and we have, you know, a little about us, um, you know, section on there just kind of talks a little bit about us. Um, and then, you know, just there, there's a, 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 you know, phone number on there. Um, you know, feel free to give us a call and, you know, I'm always, you know, up for, you know, talking to people, you know, specifically about, you know, uh, getting involved in flood hockey. We want to thank everyone for listening in to another episode of Ask the Zamboni Experts podcast. Have a question for one of our experts or an idea for a future episode? Please email your questions or requests to info at Zamboni.com. For more information and additional podcast episodes, please visit Zamboni.com forward slash podcast or search Ask the Zamboni Experts on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Matt, thank you very much for being with us. It was a pleasure to chat with you. This is Doug Peters wishing you a nice day. <laughs>